Marinas, and my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian's got a quick bite, living the word. Today our words are going to come from uh, the uh, Gospel of Matthew, and a story you're probably familiar with, but I just want to share with you something that has always stood out to me. Perhaps I've shared this with you in the past, but I want it to continue to be something in the forefront of our minds, uh, something we think about and something we hopefully uh, can even uh, emulate in a lot of ways. So it comes from uh, the story of Peter denying our Lord. Remember, our Lord had prophesied to Peter that Peter, before the cock, the, the cock crows thrice or three times, that you're going to deny me, right, three times. Or before he crows, you're going to deny me three times. Let's put it that way, sorry. Anyway, but uh, what what is interesting is, is this is that story of that happening, right? Uh, you'll remember Peter standing outside uh, the Jesus trial, and uh, there's a damsel that, that accuses them of being one of the disciples, and so on and so forth, and he keeps denying and denying. Then here's the third one, and I want to... Um, I want you to really hear what, what they accuse him of and why they accuse him of being one of his disciples, all right? And so it, what they say here is, and it says in verse, pick up verse 72 of, of Matthew chapter 26, says, and again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. So now Peter says, I swear, I don't know the man, right? And so they're all like, okay, fine, they let it go for a bit. And after a while, it says in verse 73, and after a while, uh, it came unto him, and they it came unto him. They that stood by, and said to Peter, Surely, thou also art one of them. Now here they come again, right? A third time. Why are they coming at him a third time? What is it that's making them go? No, you've got to be one of them. You've got to be one of his disciples. You've got to know the man that they're trying. What is it? Well, look what it says there. It says at the end of verse seventy-three, for thy speech betrayeth thee. In other words, there was some way that Peter had to go about, about uh, going about talking, speaking, or whatever the case may be. Now, some will go, well, that just means it was because his uh, Galilean dialect. There are a bunch of Galileans in, in Jerusalem around this time. There were a bunch of people from all over the place. So I don't think a, a, an accent would give him away. I don't think that kind of dialect would give him away. What I think gave him away was the fact that he actually had changed the way he spoke. He no longer was the old, rugged, rough fisherman, Peter. He now was the new creature, the new man being made different by Jesus Christ, Peter the Apostle. He spoke differently. Christ spoke with a little bit of kindness, a little bit of gentleness, maybe a little bit of long-suffering, perhaps some meekness. But he spoke, and as he spoke, what really happened was that he, the way he spoke, whatever he said, betrayed him. Now, I love that, okay? Because it didn't really betray him. It exposed him for who he really should be and who he really was. And we too, in the way we speak to one another, the way we speak to each other or to the world, should betray us as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shouldn't go, oh, he's just one of the guys. Oh, she's just one of the girls. They should be able to go, oh, there's something different about them. They speak differently. They react differently. They behave differently. They must be different. Now, what is it that's different about you? And as we're told later on in, by Peter, he says, he says, you know, that, that basically they may, by your good conversation, desire to know what is it, in essence, that's different about you. And, and, and so this is what we want, guys. This is what we want to have in our lives. We want to be such that our own speech, the way we talk and behave and, and with one another, betrays us as disciples of Jesus Christ. So if that encourages you today, as always, remember that I love you, we love you. God loves you, and God's got you.